Hello and welcome back and today's going to be a very short video about comparing the Terramaster F2212 with the Synology DS223J. Two NASs released about four months apart from their respective brands to enter the value series, the watch the budget series, the how much series of devices from both of these brands, Morkov often referred to as the value tier. Now, if you're looking at both these devices, let's be realistic. You're doing it because you're watching the money. Now, whether it is because you're adding a device to an existing NAS cloud setup you might have and you want to add another backup tier, or you're looking at these as a primary storage system, you've really got to refocus and look at these devices in the value series way. Not only because both of them are clearly trying to hit a price point that is gonna have corners being cut, but on top of that, they both have prioritized things very differently on their hardware and software makeup, which may impact which one's best suited to your data. Now, if we just look at the nuts and bolts and we look at the price of both these devices, the margin of difference is so fantastically small. The, at the time of recording, the Terramaster F2212 arrives at about 169 Nikka. The Synology, on the other hand, arrives at 179 Nikka, and for those that need to know, a Nikka corresponds to a quid, a dollar, a euro, because let's face it right now, I don't want to get all global economic crisis about this, but currencies are getting pretty much like for like the longer we look at it. Okay, Canada and Australia, I know, but cut me some slack. But that means that if it comes to how much you're going to spend, there really is, at least at the time of recording, only about a tenner in it and of course where you are in the world may change things in terms of delivery costs but that means that you can't even make a valid choice judgment between these two devices just based on the price so what do you do where are you got to go well why don't we look at the hardware if you look at the hardware between these devices the synology uh, you know it's you know from a larger nas brand they are the market leader and it arrives with the realtek rtd 1619b uh, arm based processor it's a 64-bit arm quad core 1.7 gigahertz it's got a uh, support of hevc 4k playback on there if you're running a support client device um it's got a decent you know nippy little processor inside there although it's not going to hit the dizzy heights of you know trans coding um, dense 4K UHD into something crazy or running a virtual machine or anything like that. Can't run complex commands with that CPU. It does a bloody good job and it arrives with one gig of memory. And although one gig of memory sounds pretty good, you can't upgrade it. It's one gig by default, that's your limit. But that one gig of memory in combination with that CPU allows you to take advantage of things like snapshots, it allows you to take advantage of BTRFS, it allows you to take advantage of their flexible RAID storage system, Synology Hybrid RAID. It allows you to enjoy the NAS remotely and on the local area network for multi media needs for backup me needs with nas to nas nas to usb nas to cloud all of that kind of stuff the hell the system even arrives with one gig usb this are not two LAN ports but at least there's one and it's got support of usb 3 so what about the terror master it has all, everything everything i just said it has it may have sounded like oh it's an advert trust me it has all of it same cpu same one gig of non-upgradable memory, has a flexible RAID storage system, Synology Hybrid RAID, T-RAID, has support of snapshots, has support of um, a BTRFS or ext 4 has one gigabit LAN, has USB 3 there on the rear. It has all of those features. It has NAS to cloud, NAS to USB, NAS to NAS. It has an operating system you can access via the web browser. These two have got so much in common. And remember, it's only about 10 are in it. So... We still can't decide between these in terms of hardware. And indeed, if we're going to focus on the hardware, I mean, the design of them is going to maybe be a factor for you both. Um, the Synology is in white. This is in black. Terramaster have gone for a slight change in their uh, chassis design. They used to have this kind of very dated metal one here that had no holes and vents on the side. They've now gone for the logo vents there on the side. A bit of ventilation there on the base. And, well, let's face it, where did they get that idea from, right? Um, but... If we look at the rear and ports and connections of these two devices and have a look at them side by side, there is one minor difference between them there. I would say that this has got a USB 2 and a USB 3 port, and this has got two USB 3 ports there. However, you can do more with the USB on this. The USB 3 ports on the Synology, you can use a UPS, 
you can use uh, a normal you know usb storage drive if you wish just get yourself a little usb plug it in use it for additional storage and that's about it you can use the container application inside this sonology container manager built on docker and yes they've both got support of docker um but that's really it you can assign those USBs, but you can't do much more with it. There isn't support of wireless adapters. There isn't support of any of, you know, the really exciting, you know, digital video tuner, that sort of thing. There's no, no support of that stuff on this USB. And indeed, it's not expandable either. However, in the case of the Terra Master, that USB port, yeah, there's only one of them. But you can use it for certain expansion devices. You can use it for more supported peripherals. You can use it for USB to 2.5 gig adapters. That's right, there are elements of expandability via that port that are just not available there on the Synology. Now, maybe you're never gonna use it. Maybe you were never gonna saturate more than a one gig connection anyway. Maybe you were never gonna look to expand because you weren't gonna use that much data. But still, nonetheless, that is one area of difference between them. Another area of difference between them that's worth touching on, if we bring that back round to the front, this isn't hot swappable. There isn't there's no trays you have to take it apart to get inside to get to those bays and it's not the nicest installation either so if one of your drives dies you're going to have to power the device down to install a new drive to boot up to rebuild the RAID configuration and you know a lot of users don't really like powering down their device if one of their discs fails because they don't want to reboot and you know potentially trigger the second drive into a failure if they come from a bad batch and there's lots of different things taking it apart shaking the device around there's lots of really things that people don't like about non you know uh, hot non hot swappable supported NASes. and of course there is support of hot swapping on this i'm not overly keen on the kind of top removal methodology of removing these trays but at least i've got the option to hot swap here and in terms of drive compatibility it's worth also highlighting that the sheer range of drives on the compatibility list compared to uh, terra master versus synology is worlds apart the list of compatible drives on synology's platform is really small they obviously list their own drives first but you can do the drop down go to third party drives but there isn't a vast number of supported at least at the time of recording drives appearing on their compatibility list here going up to about 14 tb i believe terramaster on the other hand support all the way up to 22 tb seagate wd etc etc and of course although those um seagate and wd and toshiba and that is supported on here there's fewer numbers at the time of recording this video there were seven uh, seagate drives and eight um wd drives there are hundreds of different models out there and they've only listed give or take about 15 drives from those two brands and again capping at 14 tb it's 2023 so there are definitely ways in which the terra master draws a lead there right and now we've got to talk about the software because let's be honest tos if you followed this channel before terra master software tos 5.1 it's all right and that that's the best thing we can say it definitely does all of the things that it said they say that it can there's a multimedia application there's a photo application there there is support of snapshot btrfs um and off-site snapshot and local as well and again a multi-tier backup solution built into it there there are a range of different applications and services built in again from that docker one we mentioned all the way through to iSCSI um lun support there for those kind of sand based user the usability there then the ability to create the different areas of storage, be it USB or localized and cloud-based for cloud sync bolt-ons as well. All of that included within that cost, and it's good. It just doesn't feel as consistent as Synology DSM. It doesn't feel as responsive. Better than it was, and it's as be the best it's ever been, but it's still not as good as Synology's platform. They've only got the one mobile app. They've only got, you know, a handful, you know, two or three desktop applications. Synology's platform has so many mobile apps for Android and iOS, has so many client desktop applications, has apps on Amazon Fire TV, Amazon Alexa skills, Apple TV, Android TV. They have apps out there on the devices you use. And if you are looking between these two, and software is a priority to you, interacting with the device in a regular basis in a responsive, fast, snappy fashion is important to you, 
the Synology takes the lead on that. Their software feels more responsive, is much smarter about how it uses memory and flushing the cache when it needs to in the background without your intervention. And the range of Synology applications that have been tweaked exceedingly well over time to run on such an efficient hardware architecture needs to be respected. Ultimately, like any comparison I make between Terramaster and Synology, it comes down from hardware to software. It always seems to be the case. And even when these two are brought to a near similar level of about a tenner between them, that argument, if anything, only becomes more clear. And if that's your priority hardware, you're going to have probably a funner time with the Terramaster to have more expandability. But if software is your priority and ease of use, and you don't want to have to learn new shiz, the Synology is going to be a great choice for you. But ultimately, this has been the Terramaster F2 212 versus the Synology DS223J. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Did I miss a point? Have you used the Terramaster and it didn't tick all the boxes for you? Have you used the Synology and you found it restrictive? Maybe you've already got one of these two and you wish you'd gone for the other one or you're chuffed you went for the one you did. Let me know in the comments. There should be an article comparing these two in the uh, link below as well. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic week and I will see you next time.